So in this video, we are going to go over how to pronounce the letters and words in Latin. You have to understand that Latin pronunciation is different than English pronunciation in two major ways. Now, there are a lot of details in that the individual letters are going to be different, some of them. But in Latin, the first huge and major difference is that every single letter of a word is pronounced. For example, in English, we have the phenomenon of silent letters. That E in the word ride is not pronounced by us. But in Latin, you would pronounce every single one such that this would become ride. And so, that's the first thing you have to understand. If the letter exists, then it is going to be pronounced. So, the second thing that makes English and Latin pronunciation different is that in Latin, you will pronounce every letter the same exact way every time. So, to give you an example of this, and how English is awful, is that if you're going to take the letter A, <coughs> the letter A in English can be pronounced a far variety of ways. For example, we could have it as pronounced a a a a a fat. Then all of a sudden, I take an E on the end of it, and now it has the A A A fate sound. You could also have fall a a a a a, or even far a a a a a. But for Latin, that will not be the case. In Latin. It will have the exact same pronunciation every single time. English, on the other hand, like with what you see here, is that it would make sense. We do have some rules. For example, we claim that that is a short A sound, ah, 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 and that is a long A sound because when you add the E. But sometimes English has these instances in which there's really no rhyme or reason as to why it became short. For example, if I was to think this word, we would, of course, pronounce it as nation. All I'd have to do is add an A-L, and why all of a sudden is it going to be national? There's no reason for it. It doesn't at least seem. Another problem with English is that if I were to take this word right here, and I would ask you, how do I pronounce that? And you said object, like an object on my table, I would object to how you said it. And so we very often say the word differently because of the stresses, object, versus object. Another example of where you could see that a whole set of different sort of pronunciations for no apparent reason is that if I were to take this right here, oh, we misspelled it, there we go. Uh, and of course we all know what that is, it's laughter. Why all of a sudden has it become slaughter? Ah versus all. There doesn't seem to be much rhyme or reason give you another example of how English is stupid, is that if I were to give you this O-U, and I were to ask you how you would pronounce it, you might come up with several different things. Whereas in Latin, that O-U would always be pronounced in the exact same way. So, I have O-U, I have O-U, 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 and think about it. It could be this. Pronounce that to yourself in your head. It could be this. It could be this, and it could be this. Think about it. It is tough, uh uh uh, trough, uh uh uh, through, uh uh uh, and though, uh uh uh. And so again, in English, it can be absolutely bewildering, and English is stupid. But Latin, on the other hand, Every single letter is pronounced, that's the first major difference, and every time you see that letter or letter combination, it is going to be pronounced in the exact same way. So what I do is I always like to try and walk us through the Latin alphabet. Now both English and Latin use the Latin alphabet. You probably thought that it was the English alphabet, but no, it's the Latin alphabet. And it is the alphabet that is used for many uh, Indo-European languages, including all of the Romance languages that I used to have written up here, and a good many others as well. Now, when I go through the alphabet, and by the way, why is it called alphabet? Because if you were in kindergarten, let's say, your teacher coming to the front of the room would not say, okay, boys and girls, now we're going to work on the alphabet. No, 
You learn your ABCs, but that's what alphabet is. The Greek alphabet, the first letter is alpha, the second letter is beta, and so essentially by learning the alphabet, you're learning your alpha, beta, gammas. I always like to use two markers, and those two markers are blue and red. Blue is going to be the color of marker that I use for consonants. And red is the color of marker that I'm going to be using for vowels. Believe it or not, I will also sometimes use a third marker, which in this instance is going to be purple, and I think we can see why. In that, there are certain letters that can actually do double duty. And so let's go ahead and begin, and I can walk you through, hopefully, the pronunciation of these letters of the Latin alphabet. Okay, so we're going to start out with, of course, the letter A. And written just like that, it has the sound of ah, 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 as in the word father. And so if I were to get a couple of examples of words that might be pronounced in Latin, and I were to have here, there is a Latin word that we'll learn rather soon. It is not going to be claimat or clamat, but clamat. Ah, ah, ah. Now, in Latin, just like in English, there are some vowels, all vowels, can either be what we call long or short. But unlike in English, whereas the pronunciation is different between the two of them, in Latin, the fact of the vowel being long in its value just merely means that you would say it for a longer time, a more extended time. And you will know that your vowel in Latin is long or short by if it has what is known as a macron. A macron is just a fancy word for a long mark. And so here, repeat after me, ah, ah, ah. And here, ah, ah, ah. So A's are ah's. This would be clama. Now it's going to be clama. It's still the same pronunciation, but you have ah, ah, ah versus ah. Second letter of the alphabet is obviously going to be the letter B. Written like that right there, and it has the exact same sound as what we would have in English. Ba 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 ba. And so therefore, not a Latin word, but you pronounce it ba ba. Ba ba. Ba ba. And so forth and so on. Third letter of the Latin alphabet. The letter C. Now, when you're dealing with the letter C, in English, there are multiple pronunciations that it could have. For example, that is race, but that would be cat. For Latin, the C's always have a hard K sound. Ka -ka 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 -ka. So this word in Latin would not be race, but remember, rake, rake. And this would not be cat, but cut. And so, always, 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 as though it has the hard C sound. And it is a guttural sound, meaning that it is made in the back of the throat. Ka, 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 ka. A, B, C, and then you have the letter D, as in da, 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 da. So a couple of Latin words that we're going to learn within the first three, four chapters. This would be pronounced said. Or you'd have this as a pronunciation. Dabit. Dabit. Say it. Dabit. Da, 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 da. So A, B, C, D. The next letter is E. I cap my blue marker. I get the red one again. And the E sound if in Latin going to have not an E sound, but always an A sound. So A's are A's, and E's are A's. And like all vowels, it could be E, E, say it, E, versus like the Fonz, A. You probably don't know who that is, but that's okay. And so, if I were to give you a, a word, it would be good for you to practice. It would be, let's say, that one. 
So, short E's, it would be E, E versus A. Still the same pronunciation, but just short versus long. Kede, Kede versus Kede. Kede. Make the other one long. Kede. So, again, A's are O's and E's are A's. And you're going to learn that I's are E's. So, A's are O's, E's are A's, I's are E's. And the pronunciation thus is going to be a little bit different. So, A, B, C, D, E, and then the next, F. Exactly as we have it in English, it is the labial fricative sound, meaning that it is made with your lips, but blowing air. Fa, 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 fa. And so, if I were to give you this word, it would be de fessa. De Fessa, de fessa, de fessa, de fessa. But it has the classic F sound, fa 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 fa. The next letter is that of G. Now, much like C's are always hard, G's are always hard as well. Ga 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 ga. So again, if I were to write this word in English. We will pronounce it as rage, j -j 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 -j. or our state, Georgia. But in Latin, those words would be pronounced as rage, rage, and georgia, georgia, ga 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 ga. So again, they are always a hard sound. Now, exactly like a C is a guttural sound, say it, ka 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 ga 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 is that essentially, they both, as Latin letters, evolved from the same Greek letter. And that Greek letter is the third letter of the Greek alphabet, alpha, beta, gamma. And this is what a capital gamma looks like. And as the Greek culture and language came into contact with the Roman culture, the Roman language of Latin, what you see is kind of a melding of these two letters. Because in the early, early days in the development of the language, there would be the ga 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 ga, -ga sound, and over time, it began to rotate to where it essentially became what we know of as the letter C. And that is why, in the Roman naming system, Whenever you're dealing with the name Gaius or with the name Gnaeus, the abbreviation for both of those names is C and CN. And that is because the letter C and the letter G are essentially the same sound coming from the same place. Ka 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 ka. Ga 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 ga. And as you can see, even in the letters themselves such that the Romans began to differentiate between those two subtle different sounds of ka 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 and ga ga ga. By when it was a ga ga ga, they put a little curly cue on it. And that is why the letter G has the looks of it as it does now. And as a matter of fact, if you were to look at the lowercase gamma, that's what it looks like in Greek. And you can see how that then turns into the letter G for us. So C's and G's are always a hard C and a hard G sound. Ga 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 and ka 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 ka. Another Latin word we're going to learn within the first ten chapters or so would be this word right here. Don't say gim it. Don't say even gim it, but gim it. A's are A's, E's are A's, and thus game it. Ga 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 ga. A hard G. All right, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The letter H. The letter H is not really the letter H. Instead, what the letter H is, it is a breathing. And what it signifies is that when you say a word, you are letting more air come out of your breath. So, for example, if I have chosen as my name that, my name is not 
Honesta. My name would be Onesta. Now sometimes the H is pronounced. And in chapter 1 we have this word here. Habitat. But all that the H is truly doing is that it is allowing a great amount of air to escape from your breath, as it were. And that's why very often in English you will find things like that, herba, instead of herba. But it gives us English words like herbicide and herbs. Same way as that if my name were that right there, here in the United States we might call him Henry, but you go to England and all of a sudden it becomes Henry. And so you can see that sometimes that H is pronounced by others and other times not. But truly what the H is, it is as a escape of breath that you have in extra adding it whenever you're pronouncing a word that requires it. One last one would be this one. The pronunciation of that word in Latin would not be theatrum, but te atrum. Te atrum. All right, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. This is an instance in which, again, you have the vowels in red, the consonants in blue, but here I have written it in purple. And that is because sometimes the letter I is functioning like a vowel, and sometimes the letter I is functioning like a consonant. Now, I'll give you an example of some consonant, or I should say vowels, would be like, for the example, this word. Now, remember, A's are A's, E's are A's, and I's are E. Like in the English word, liter. Like a two liter of soda. E, E, E. So this would be pronounced as scribe it. Repeat after me. E, E, E. E, E. E, E. E, E. E. And so, it has the E, 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 E sound. Now, sometimes it is going to actually, and let's go with another example so you can see here, another Latin word. Eratus. Eratus. E, E, E. But sometimes, and I'll give you an example here, of this word in Latin, which means now. If I say it slowly, it is going to be e um, e um. But if you speed that up, e um, e um, e um, e um, e um, yum, 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 it has as though it turns into a vowel, or I should say a consonant, that has the ya, 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 ya sound. And there are tons and tons of examples of words like this in Latin. For example, the most famous of all Romans. His name is Iulius. But, if you speed that up, Iulius, 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 it becomes. Or take the word that means he or she throws. Iakit. Speed that up and it turns into ya, 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 Now, this is troublesome for a language when, how do you know when it is functioning like an I? How do you know when it's functioning like a consonant? Ya, 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 ya. And scholars, particularly in the Middle Ages, monks who worked very much with language and the copying down of text, they decided to help us out. And so very often, when the necessity of the I is such that it needs to have a consonantal ya 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 sound, they decided to put a little cue on it, or a curly cue, I should say, a little hook. And for all intents and purposes, that then becomes for us in English our letter J. And that's why in the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, I and J are actually the exact same letter. It's just the letter that sometimes functions like a vowel, but on the weekends maybe, lets loose a little bit and becomes a consonant. And so, ya 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 yakit, ya 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 yam, and then of course, it's Julius. And over time, in English, the pronunciation for it became a j j j j instead of a ya 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 ya. So, nevertheless, 
That is the letter I. Written in purple, because sometimes it is a consonant. Yeah, 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 yeah. And more often than not, it is a vowel. E, E, E. So, going back to consonant, H, I, J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, H, I, I. The letter K. I'm not going to say much about the letter K. There are only three words in the Latin language that I know of that begin with the letter K. That would be the words kalendai, cartago, and another word that is related to kalendai as an adjectival form. But it's exactly as you would expect. Ka, 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 ka. The next letter is the letter L. Now write it like that so it will not be confused necessarily with an I, but the letter L is exactly as we would expect it with a la, 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 la. And it is one of two letters in the alphabet that are what we call liquids, meaning that we formulate it, la la la, liquid, with our tongue, your lingua. And that's a Latin word in and of itself. Lingua. La 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 la. Other words that we have could be this one in Latin that we have in the first couple of chapters. Lente. Lente. But it has the la la la. Another one would be this one. Puella. Now, an interesting thing about the letter L is that in English, as well as other Indo-European language, where the L appears matters in your pronunciation of it. So I give you the English letters, or the English word, and say it very slowly to yourself. Little. Do you see when the L is at the front of the word? Your tongue goes to the front of your mouth. But when the L is in the middle or at the end of the word, it actually goes to the back, and so little. And you can see that the L, using the tongue, can be pronounced in slightly different ways, depending upon where that L appears. Think about it. Lingua, where is your tongue? Versus puella, where is your tongue? If it's at the front, your tongue is at the front of your mouth. And if it's at the back or in the middle, then obviously it goes to the back of your mouth. The next letter is the letter M. Now, I like to put up the letter M and the letter N at the exact same time. And the reason why I like to do that is because they are blood brothers. By that I mean, they are both made in the exact same way. So, make to yourself the M sound. Maybe you smell something good that's cooking. You say, mmm. Now do it, holding your nose. Mmm. You cannot do it. The same thing with the N sound. Mmm. And that is because both M and N are what we call nasal sounds. And if I were to give you a word that has both of them in there, we'll see it in chapter one. Please don't say no man. Remember, it's no mine. No mine. No mine. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And mm -mm 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 for both of those. The next letter, I have to get to the red marker again, and it is the vowel O. So quickly to review our vowels, because they are incredibly important. A's are A's, E's are A's, I's are E's. A, A, A. You just realized something. You're surprised. A, A. Over here, like your, your, your best friend tells you, that they have a new boyfriend or girlfriend, you say, ah. And then you learn that it's your boyfriend or girlfriend. Ah. Over here? Eh. Like, like, you're, like you're from the upper Midwest. Or Canadian. Eh? Versus like the Fonz. You still don't know who that is. A. Eh. Eh. E. Over here, the O is going to have the sound exactly as it is. It's onomatopoetic. O. In English, for example, if we cook something in the pot, but in Latin it would be pot, pot. It always has the O sound. So, again, that same information. <laughs> ah, you have a new boyfriend or girlfriend. Ah, it's my boyfriend or girlfriend. Same thing over here. Oh, you have a new boyfriend or girlfriend. Oh, it's my boyfriend or girlfriend that you've stolen. And so that sound of oh, 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 oh. Give you an example here, the Latin word, no. Known. 
Oh. 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 One more. Not octo, but octo. 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 So that is the O sound. The next letter is the P. P P P P P P P. Exactly as you would expect it to be pronounced. But words that we have for the P sound include pater and puella and puer and so forth and so on. But p p p p p p p. Now the next letter is the letter Q. And just like in English, in Latin you will never, ever, 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 ever see the letter Q without its little partner in crime, the U always with it. Now the Q by itself has the k k k k k k k sound, but when it has that U with it, it will then have the qua 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 sound. So here it is with not quad, but quod. And here it again with another word. Quo qua. Quo qua. Qua 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 qua. Now, the next letter, the letter R. Now, just like the letter L was a liquid sound, meaning you used your tongue to form it, the same thing with the letter R, which means, as an Indo-European requires, it should be rolled. And inevitably, I know what you're thinking. Oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Take your tongue, move it to slightly above, right underneath the roof of your mouth, and then blow air over it. Kind of like, and I'll remove my mask very briefly to show you, Bernoulli's principle. If I were to blow on the top of this paper, the wind that I create will cause it to flutter and actually lift up. And that's how airplanes get off of the ground, because of the wings, that the air going above it causes the wing to actually be lifted up. So, let's see if I'm right. It's called Bernoulli's principle. And there it is again. And so, much like the paper, your tongue should be allowed that the air flow above it, causing it to flutter. So again, arrrr. And so examples of this would be words like kurrit, kurrit, or rapit, rapit, a r r r sound. The next letter S. S is always going to have the S sound, not the Z sound. Very often in English, we have words that even though the letter is S, it has a Z, Z, Z kind of sound to it. But for us, it would be always a S, 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 it. Or again, we saw earlier, De Fesa, De Fesa. Never, ever with a Z sound. T. A dental sound, meaning we use our teeth and tongue, like da da da, a dental sound, your teeth and tongue. And over here, ta ta ta. And an example of that would be like this totus, totus, ta 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 ta. The next letter, I have to get again the vowel marker, is the letter U. And it has not the uh sound, as in up, but the u sound. Ooh. 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 Somebody punches you in the gut. Versus you see something gross. Ooh. 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 Examples of this would be the word for one in Latin. Unus. 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 Ooh. 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 And ooh. And we saw it over here with, of course, the words poo am. Poo am. A's or A's. E's are A's, I's are E's, O's are O's, and O's are O's. The next letter, and I should have actually written it like this. And that is because in Latin, U's and the letter, what we call V, are actually the same letter. But just like previously, with the eyes, sometimes the U 
is functioning like a vowel u, and sometimes it's functioning like the consonant wa. And this is incredibly important, such that in Latin, in your pronunciation, the V is always going to be like the English wa 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 sound. So to give you some examples of this, you could have this word here, meaning alive. It's not vivus or vivus, but it is rather wee woos. Wee woos. Another example would be this one. We keena. Wa 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 wa. Ka 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 ka. And remember, e e e e e e e. We keena. Or one more. We la. But always with a wa 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 sound. And that then explains. Back to letter Q. Remember that if U and V is really the same exact letter, that's why it has the, of course, pronunciation of qua 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 qua, because the U is that V, and that V has the quality of a wa 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 sound. So, A B C D E F G H I J K L M N P Q R S T U V. What's the next letter? Well, it's W. I'm not going to write it down. One, it doesn't exist, and two, it's already on the board. Remember, if U's and V's are really the same letter, then that would mean I've already written a double U. And that's why the W is called a double U. And that's why it is where it is in the alphabet, because it is U and WU. And so the W is already on the board in and of itself in the form that it would be. The next letter I need to get, of course, my marker is the letter X. It has the KS sound. X, X, X. So, for example, this word, Duxit. Duxit. Here's another one that can have Wokes. Wokes. Remember? Wo, 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 wo. Oaks. So, the KS sound, I suppose I'll make a note of it there. We're almost done. The next is going to be the letter Y, which is really not the letter Y whatsoever. Instead, it is a borrowed letter from the Greek alphabet, and almost every word that you will ever see in Latin that has a Y is actually a Greek word using that Greek letter, and that Greek letter is the letter Upsilon. And so it has really the pronunciation of the U as well. To give you two examples of that, and both of these are Greek words borrowed into Latin, in English, we would say pyramus, but in Latin, it would be purimus. And then here, the mythological creature killed by Apollo, a huge snake-like creature, it's the puthon. The puthon, so it has the oo oo sound. And then finally, the last letter of the alphabet, the letter Z. It is going to most likely have kind of a DZ sound to it. Z, Z. And so, again, not that common. There is, again, a word brought into Latin, borrowed from Greek. It's zmyrna. Zmyrna. But it has the z, z, z. So it's almost like it's a, both a D and a Z at the same time. So that's the Latin alphabet and how you pronounce it. And we're going to practice lots and lots of trying to string these letters together in example words, but the main things to remember are the pronunciation of the vowels. A's are ah, uh, ah, 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 if it's long, it'll have a macron. E's are A's, eh, a, 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 I's are E's, e, 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 O's are O's, o, o, U's are U's, U, U, and obviously keep in mind Always a hard C, ka ka ka. Always a hard G, ga 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 ga. It can be an I as in a consonant, ya 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 ya. The V sound always is a wa 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 wa. And the Y and Z are borrowed from Greek. Very rare, but nevertheless, now part of the alphabet in which we use. There's one more thing, diphthongs.
and thus we will have everything we need in order to be able to pronounce the Latin language. There's one more thing that you need to know about the pronunciation of Latin, and then we're going to practice a little bit, is that there are these things called diphthongs, spelled like this. And essentially, what a diphthong is, is a combination of two vowels that when put together are essentially going to create one singular sound. And there are five of them, although two of the diphthongs are much more common than any others. So, let's go through them right now, and after that, you should be able to have the ability to follow these rules of pronunciation and start to pronounce the Latin words that we will encounter in the very first chapter, which is chapter one. So, the first diphthong is going to be an A plus an E. Now, if you were to say it, a e a e a e i i and if you go fast enough, i i i i i i i i i it has the i sound. And so that's exactly how you pronounce the diphthong with an ae, an incredibly common and popular diphthong. So I'll give you some examples of words. So, uh, or I suppose I should say that it sounds like, and I'll give you an English word for which, i. And so here, if the name of a person is chosen, it's not going to be later. It's not going to be Lita, and it's not going to be Laeta, it's Laita. So say it with me, practice saying it. I, Laita. Another example would be the word for girls, and there you have it, Pualai, Pualai. So it is going to have the I, I, I sound. Next, the Fong is going to have the combination of A and U, and if you were to say it, A-U, A-U. Ow, 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 and it is what you would say if you were to hammer your thumb, you would say, ow. And words that would have that diphthong as an example would include, let's say, um, here's one, there it is, out it, say it again, out it, or we had earlier the word loudest, like in one of our classes was a student named Lauren, or Lauren, but Lau, ow, 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 this, ow, dit. and so the A-U diphthong is going to be an ow. The next one is going to be the combination of the letters O and E, oi, 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 is what it ends up sounding like, and so it has like oi as in oil, and so Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! And then of course you say, oi, oi, oi. Nobody ever knows that, but that's kind of like a, a national cheer for Australia. Oi! And so, one of those words that we could use as an example that has the O-E diphthong is going to be this right here. Phoenix. It is not Phoenix, but oi. And I will say this, though, that certain letter combinations in Latin, whereas we pronounce it as I, when that word or that diphthong comes into the English language, we anglicize it and make it an E sound, like we should pronounce it like this. All guy, but instead in English it becomes algae. So we anglicize it to an E, we anglicize it to a A, uh, and we anglicize it to an E sound, like phoenix, instead of what it should be, which is phoenix. Phoenix. And by the way, I'm going to draw a line right here because 80% of the time, if you do see a diphthong, it is going to be one of the top two. And then the next diphthong is the combination of the letters E and U. And it has a oop, 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 a And it's difficult to describe, but it's kind of like the word feud. And like if you were to watch the television show Family Feud. Oh. So if I were to have here as an example, you have the word that means alas, it is who. Hew. So it has that o o sound to it. Kind of like you're saying both of them, but so fast it makes one singular sound. And the very last of the diphthongs that you need to know is going to be like the letters U and I, and it has the we, 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 like saying yes in French, like we oui, we. Oui. And so uh, here it is, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, we, we, e, e, e. I guess it, uh, it's difficult for me to, to, to give you an example in English as to what it's going to be, but yeah, like, like, like the French we, essentially. So, we, 
And an example of this would be that word right there. And you would say not who ik or who eek, but rather quick, quick. And it has that wait, wait, wait. Mr. Brian Thompson, Mr. Michael Kennedy, can y'all bring each bring a textbook up to the front of the office? Mr. Brian Thompson, Mr. Michael Kennedy, I need a textbook for each of your classes at the front office, please. And so that is the end of the uh, going over of the Latin alphabet and how you would actually try and pronounce the words. When you begin chapter one, and I'm about to go through chapter one now, you can see for the pronunciation of all of those words as we had it. So here is chapter one to practice our pronunciation that you will find of all the words that we have uh, in the story. So go ahead and try it or repeat after me. Eke. Eke. Remember C's are always hard. Eke. The next one, quod. Not quad, but quod. Go ahead and practice it yourself. Quod. Here, remember, it is going to have not iam, but we say it quickly. Iam, 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 iam. Yam. So go ahead and say it. Yam. Yam. Et. Et. An easy one. Remember that V's are always a wah 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 sound, so wheela. Wheela. Here, wheela, say it. Wheela, rustica. Wheela, rustica. Wheela, rustica. Don't say no mine. You pronounce every single letter. No, me, ne. No, me, ne. Nomine. Say it. Nomine. Tough. It has a diphthong at the very beginning. I. Sta. Remember, A's are A's, E's are A's, and I's are E's. I. Sta. Te. Not E state or A state, but I. State. So practice saying it. I. State. I. State. Here, pu el la. Pu el. Say it. Pu el. Ubi. Ubi. Say it. Ubi. It's asking a question, so. Quiz. Quiz. Diphthong, quai. Say it. Quai. All the letters. Altera. 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 Two things here to remember. V's always have the whoa, whoa, whoa sound. C's are always hard. Ka, 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 ka. And pay attention to how the I's are long. So, we. Kina. We kina. Say it. We kina. We kina. The next word, practice saying it after me. Etiam. Etiam. Sub and not arbor. Remember, every single letter gets pronounced. Sub arbore. Sub arbore. Underline the diphthong. Repeat after me. Light. Light. Not later, not laida. Light. Not dumb. Doom. Repeat after me. Doom. The next one. Core. Asking a question. Core. Core. Everybody always laughs for this one, I don't know why. But nevertheless, it's asking a question, chapter one. Quid fuck it. Repeat after me. I'm sure you'll be quite excited. Everybody laughs, it is funny, I suppose. Quid fuck it. Quid fuck it. Asking the question. Said it. Said it. Said it. 
the next one, not habitat. That is an English word that comes from this, but remember the A's are A's. A's are A's, E's are A's, I's are E's. Habitat. Habitat. People very often want to say legit. Do not. It's legit. 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 And then finally, the last one. Make sure that I is long. That I is short. Short, I. Long, I. 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 Scribe it. Scribe it is the pronunciation there. So say it. Scribe it. Practice pronouncing the words of chapter one, Eke Romani, and eventually you are going to have a quiz in which your pronunciation is going to be graded by me. Every one of you individually will have an opportunity to read Latin, and your pronunciation of the Latin words is going to determine your grade for that particular assignment. So, nevertheless, remember your pronunciation of your letters. Two things are different. One, the Romans say every single letter every single time, and each letter only has one way that it is pronounced, and they pronounce it that way every single time. So two major differences with English. Thank you.